Hey everyone, well, it is June, which means it's summer, and we're gonna start off with another floral portrait, this time of the Stargazer Lily. This is my middle sister and my maternal grandmother's favorite, favorite flower. And these are gorgeous, elegant flowers, and so I have pulled out a little bit of Mozart to join me along as we paint today. And pull out your pinks, pull out your magentas. Uh, this elegant, beautiful flower has a lot of interesting, distinguishing characteristics in its pattern and in its color, and I think you'll love learning and painting this gorgeous flower so pull out your paints get a 9 by 12 piece of paper you're going to want to paint big with this one and enjoy painting along with me hey everyone okay so we're back and i'm excited because we're painting a portrait a really up close and personal of a stargazer lily so i want to point out a few things before we start this is not one of my favorite flowers, but it is was my grandmother's, my maternal grandmother's favorite flower, and it's my middle sister's favorite flower. It was her graduation this past weekend, or their party for the graduation, and she these are the, her favorite flowers that she chose. Um, they are very pungent. If you have allergies, I'm sure you're not gonna want these flowers around. They have lots of stuff that they are spreading, um, but they're, they're very gorgeous, rich color. And now that I have been studying them, I definitely have a greater appreciation for them. So we are going to paint a flat lay today. And what I mean by that is we're just going to almost look at the, the flower just flat on like this. So that's why I wanted to point out a few things for you as you begin to sketch yours and feel free to pause this video since I've already sketched mine out. But if you have a picture, I'll have a picture on the blog, but I want to just point out a couple things. Um, notice first that green triangle in the middle. See how, and I'll move the stamen or those little guys up. You can see it's almost a very light green triangle. So notice that that's where the stamen or the these middle things are coming out from. Um, also notice the orderliness and the elegance of the petals. So we've got six petals. Um, we have one, two on the front, frontmost are kind of coming out to the right and lower, right and left lower, we have one, two going completely north and south, and then we have one, two on both sides, and they are perfectly proportional as far as their evenness, and all of them on this bouquet that I have are like this. They all um, have a very much more intense um, in the middle right here, intense coloring. We've got dots here, and this is going to be interesting how we're going to get those without washing everything out, right? Um, and I have some ideas. We might need to come back. We're going to probably start with doing those little dots so that they can dry and then we can do a wash over them. They will fade, but that's okay. Also, I do, you can see some green coming out. So I have on mine including included a bit of a stem. You don't need to do that. You could just do the flower. And I think both are going to look very, very nice. So I'm going to put this over um, on the side here and making sure I'm not... Um, getting in the way of anything. I'm just checking my settings really quick to making sure as well that everything looks right and nice. I'm gonna set that there. And then let's go ahead and making sure that you have a pink. I'm gonna be using a pink. I'm using a magenta. Um, I'm gonna be using a hooker's green and um, some yellow to create that really light effect. So first of all though, I'm actually gonna grab that magenta with a tiny brush, a size two tiny brush, and I am going to start by um, going and just adding in lots and lots of these dots. I'm gonna add some pink to it since I don't quite want it that much magenta. It is darker, but we want more pink. So again, I am moving this around. I'm not gonna take tons of time but I do want to create that sense of that very distinct feature of those spots, those pink spots and dots that are all over this flower. So go ahead and take that tiny brush and just start creating spots. Do not worry that they need to be really, um, my dad is calling me, let me silence this really quick. I'll have to give him a call back that this is really, moving around here okay so coming back around down here coming and building around some more dots here and you'll notice too mine are not terribly circular and I'm not too worried about that and again I'm coming back over here and there's some different sizes 
This is going to help you to create some borders about where we're going to paint and also note where your petals are so that when you paint you make sure each petal is distinguished from the other. We don't accidentally start merging our colors. So one thing to notice as well that every single petal they have a pretty good white area on the outside. So we're going to be leaving that white border and doing maybe just a very light pink on the outside of it. Okay, and I too need to make sure that I have all mine moved around here. And we're continuing on. This probably is going to be the most lengthy part. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm trying to keep these YouTube videos around 15 to 20 ish minutes and I think we might be more on the 20 ish minute side because of these dots but I'm going to keep on going around and moving and moving around some more and I'm going to go ahead you know what? I'm going to pause the video real quick because you certainly don't need me to do dots so go ahead if you are working through this with me Grab, keep going making your dots. It could be something too that you do while you're watching a show or relaxing one evening and then finish up the painting. I'm gonna pause this video. I'm gonna play with more of these dots. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got all those nice dots created in. Some have more dots than others, just depending on where we were, where the dots were. And so I just try to create them as prolifically or sparsely as, um, as, as, the, as the flower had them. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a really nice light green. So I'm going to take the hooker's green and I'm going to mix some yellow together with the hooker's green so that we have a really nice light yellow. Or I'm sorry, nice green. It's because it's not too, it's a bright green, right? So I'm now going to take and I see some green too. Again, we were looking at this. I see the green in here on the edges and I even see some green, for example, on the edges of the flower there. So I'm going to, I have another flower that I'm working off of and I'm going to go ahead and I'm adding in some green right there and then on our center, which we I saw quite a bit of green coming out of, I'm going to go ahead and include that. And if you feel like it's a bit too yellow or it's a bit too green, either way, just adjust your colors as necessary. I'm going to go ahead and move that out. I'm going to go ahead and lay down my stem as well and my leaf down here. And I have another leaf of my flower portrait here. And I have the some of the stamen that are coming right out. I've got that. And I'll go ahead and lay that down. So that's great. So I've got that down now. Now I'm going to go ahead and I want to take the darker green, the hooker's green, and I'm going to go ahead and add in the darker areas of my petals. And you'll notice too, as I'm gonna put this right here so you can see that better, you see how dark those leaves are, right? Those are really dark. So I'm gonna add some magenta to the green. I wanna just, I don't wanna introduce another color in. I'm trying to use the colors that we already have. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in that darker green here and then down here as well and again adjust as you want I'm going to add a lighter green over it but I'm going to let that sit for a minute I'm going to come back I'm going to take pure pink now no magenta in it and I'm going to start that big streak in the middle that we have with each one how there's a, it's just kind of right most intense in the middle I'm going to go ahead now and I am going to start bringing that out over here I'm going to bring that out bring it out over here and depending on the lilies that you're using I have some lilies in this bouquet that are a deep purple and others that are more fuchsia so go ahead and use whatever colors that you think match the intensity and the colors of the lily I then am going to go out and take the lighter area and just start bringing it out and around and these are bold flowers I'm going to get some excess water and I am going to go over my lovely dots and you'll see we are picking up some of the color but not all of it and that's fine because I am noticing a lot of almost not smearing but just a beautiful beautiful combination of color I'm going to come down here as well and pull that pink down and just pull it over over the, the beautiful dots 
being careful too that we still have these guys the pollen carriers so I want to be cognizant of them and we'll be adding some color there and they are interesting because they're like a dark yellow almost we were probably gonna mix, mix a yellow with some um, violet and I just went over one of them so I'm gonna go ahead and take my paper towel and just merge that off if you find that your middle is not as intense just go ahead and add some color there I know I'm gonna do that and then let that color merge I'm going to come over here and do the same thing and then come back with my paper towel and you can really see, start to see some of the colors start to pop, right? I'm going to come back over here and then being cognizant too of how I have about, you know, that, that quarter inch off the side of the flower that's pure white and most likely what I'm going to come back and do is either I can do this, I can just take the edge of the brush and just take that with the pink to show how it's go it's that you have the edge right there that would be fine in fact on this one I have a little bit of green coming off the bottom where it curls behind so I'll go ahead and pick up some green rinse the brush really well and go ahead and just add in that green right in here and feel free if you want to go ahead and just again pulling that pink all the way around to create that border. It's a little bit challenging when the white's on the end because we have to we have that white background. Now we could wait for everything to dry and then do a wash and that would certainly help to um, create that white background as well. So you, you might decide you want to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and take that very light color and we have a bit of a curl on this this particular flower so I'm going to show off that curl right there and there we go okay now I'm going to go ahead and continue working and moving around I'm going to bring it in just a bit closer so you can see that I do need to extend that flower out and those colors um, I'm going to go ahead right to where that triangle was too of those colors and really pull from that because that's what I'm seeing on the flower and in our flower portraits as we get really up close with these flowers the goal is to paint what I see not what I think is there right and sometimes that is different what I think is there versus what actually is there and I think sometimes it's easy to eliminate things to create a painting that is not so cluttered I know I certainly do that a lot that is the artist prerogative but for these we are just learning to see a little bit deeper see what's really there see the beautiful colors in these flowers I'm going to add some water I'm going to come up and again I'm just doing that wash over everything coming down 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 deep into the heart of this stargazer lily going around the pollinators as I like to call them moving around and then creating the just that border with the very very tip with the tip of my paintbrush. Okay, so this is looking nice. It's actually looking very nice. It's very vivid. I think we can safely say this looks like a stargazer lily. I will be coming back and I will go ahead and eliminate some of that. The pencil markings, I'll erase those. Now I'm coming back to, I'm gonna grab some more magenta and some more pink and I really wanna see too, where do I have the bold colors? Do I have those colors right up to the end like I see where we just see that real bold, oops, I'm so sorry flower, I just got paint on you, really bold interior middle of each petal. Let's get that off, there we go. And then even coming in here, it really seems to come in from the heart of the flower and then go outward. So I want to do the same and creating to that sense of bending of the flower. I know that's hard to do on a 2D paper, but really if we show that bending of that color coming out, okay, that's looking really nice. I don't want to do too much because this is pretty pretty wet, right? And you can see how wet this is. I am going to grab some green though. Grab some green and come back over on our stems. On this particular one that I'm painting, it actually was two lilies on the same stem. So this stem is going up in another huge beautiful lily 
is right off the other stem. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of that lighter color. We have the darker color, but with the lighter color, I'm going to go ahead and draw in some of those nice lines that I see. And nice, really nice lines. All the way down from one end of the stem of the leaf, I'm sorry, to the other. And that looks really, really good. Okay, this is looking nice. Now, we have those ends right in here that are different colors that have that since they're almost a brown. They're actually a dark, really a dark yellow. Almost if you have an ochre, you might wanna grab a yellow ochre or a yellow medium. Um, I am gonna introduce a little bit of a new color here. I'm gonna grab that yellow. I'm actually gonna add some magenta to it. And again, that's going to be nice where it's almost a burnt color, but it's not too burnt. And I'm going to go ahead. I know this looks a little bit different, especially since we don't see this color at all in the really the rest of the flower. We see it a bit in the pollen on the that's hanging out on the flowers, and I'll show you that in just a second here. That's actually green. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I did get all of these. I'm going to come back with my green here and let that go a little bit stronger so you can see too where this is showing green, a little bit more green right here. You can see the pollen down here and what we could do, what we could do if you so dare is take some of that color and after like on a dry area where I know I've got some pollen, you can just add in some splatters. You might want to wait till after this dries. I'm going to be daring and I'm just going to splatter it around just a little bit. There, not a ton, just a little. Now I'm going to let the whole thing dry. I will come back with my micron pen and add in some more detail and probably if you want you can completely come back and add in some more dots if you wanted. But I really think, okay, this actually did not take us quite as long as I thought. We are going to be 20-ish minutes. But it looks beautiful. It's a gorgeous Stargazer Lily. I might even write something like Stargazer Lily 2022, maybe send this one to my sister. But it's gorgeous. And we completed it. We are once again creating in the margins. I love it. I love the colors of this one. I love painting with you. And I will look forward to seeing you very soon.